when you're just going for right click for right click when it comes to the last hits. So he's going to have to like do, he's just going to be nuking the wave nonstop. Zai missing out on the spear because Madara actually does manage to pop the spin in time. With the help of the Inks, well, they will run him down. That's going to be first blood for Insania. Oh, and Yapsor's a second dead. blood here on Yapsor as well as the Orb of Venom. And the body blocking from Taiga will ensure that he claims the last hit. Yeah, there's nice rotations by him uh, throughout the series as Nisha's getting real aggressive here. Boxy's starting to get Jeez. a little bit low. One more hit would have done it. We thought. Taiga coming in again. Doing a little bit of damage. Doesn't He's have He's getting pretty low yet, with the Orb of Venom. Do you One think more. he can actually go for it with a swing on through with a swashbuckle? Maybe? Oh, two no. HP. He had two health. He had to get in front of him with the swashbuckle. Yeah. That's how you get the extra top lane for uh, Alliance with the level two on the Grim Stroke. They're going to try and smear him away. The Ink Swell does pop on top of Mars, but he fortunately had enough stick charges that uh, Madara is not going to be able to go for that. Okay, there Alliance do manage to grab three, but it's going to cost Insania his life. He's going to get speared straight to the tree. The Ink Swell going off, though. Maybe they can't finish him off in time. Finally, the last shot from Yapsor is there just before the explosion can occur. And Madara, four to two. Ultimate out from the Reiki. Boxy is just having a, such a tough time in this lane. Actually, went for the bottle. Does have some bottle charges left. Burrow strikes on through. They do have a spin to be able to finish off the Mars at top. Boxy got away with the Burrow strike, and he does still have his healing salve up, so he's good there. But they just keep on getting chased away. And right now, Puppy, the five position, is level three. Taiga is level two, and it's actually going to die here with a fire blast. And the last backstab hit from Nisha. Five kills in seven and a half minutes now for Team Secret. And this bottom lane just continues to struggle as the Sand King he just gets hit a few you times. Have it, though with the Ink Swell. Maybe they can actually stay on top of Nisha long it. enough they can get the kill. A big turnaround. And oh, they still have the Burrow the Strike. Out. They can still make a full commitment here with the Ink Swell. They're going to jump onto the Tanky Ogre. Not tanky enough though to live inside of the Sandstorm. Oh, but Nisha, here. he's going to go for the back line with Midwan joining him as well. They should be able to get an easy double kill for that Shadow Fiend. Now Zion's going to be running underneath his Tier 1 tower since Secret teleported to bottom lane. There's nobody to help him with this dive, it seems, as Yapsor couldn't stop the Juggernaut all by himself. Yeah, I mean, it should be just enough for him to get out of that situation as Yapsor might now get gone on. The nuke going to miss, but Honor is now on top of him, and this should be a kill. Zai, he's going to go for the opposing kill. Unless he tries to save, instead go for Madara. He's going to hold on to the spear, throws out at the last second, spears him to the tree. But there is a decent amount of sustain here in Madara. He has just enough out from the stick until a fire blast comes in. And Zai with the bloodlust will run down the carry jug, who does manage to grab his... Such a fast fuel scepter. Mikkei seems to have no game whatsoever. 10-minute bounty runes coming up. And Sania hoping that maybe they... Okay. A spear away, just trying to escape, but they actually do manage to get the spear onto the Morphling now. Zai trying to chase him into the Shrine area, but as he reaches back to it, and especially with a TP and the Juggernaut. Sentry laid out, Boxy sees it, and Burrow strikes away real quickly. And they're trying to find him right now, and Puppy, in fact. And then it's lashed the two of them together, trying to get away from the Ricky. The explosion goes out, but he's going to tick out here from the Ignite or the Final blink oh, nice strike dodge. in from the Riki, and that's going to be a dodge on the Burrow strike as well, which leaves Boxy with no buildability whatsoever. He tries to cut through a tree in a cute little way, but doesn't change anything. Now the smoke cloud that's finally level from Nisha will help Puppy get away from the Juggernaut. Yeah, Puppy's actually over. just going to run no problem, and another kill added to the total. 4,000 up. The Shadow Fiend continues to have a big game. Oh, he gets the spear before he can actually You're get the dead. Rolling Thunder off, and that'll be Tier 1 falling against the going to run into Mikke here, and the smoke screen. In fact, switches targets onto Insania. Rolling Thunder's coming through, though. They can keep him stunned here, especially with Ink Swell. Tries to get away. Pops the ultimate, actually bounces back down with a Burrow Strike on top of it as well. Nisha is gone, and Puppy is stuck here in the river. He should be falling as well, unless Zai can somehow protect him. Throws out the arena. Goes for the fast kill onto this Pango, but can't quite finish him up. That wall damage being nerfed. Probably makes a difference there in that kill. Taiga survives, and Zai just runs into his death. Yeah, they committed a lot to trying to save Nisha there, so we'll lose a few heroes. 3,000 gold is still the lead, and they're going to grab the tower as... Uh, this is a stark difference in the previous game where it felt like Secret were willing to take all fights together. Mm -hmm. It sort of just feels 
a little bit more random, uh, considering I think the game has no bearing on standing anymore at all. Yeah. So having a little bit more fun if you're secret as they should blow up Boxy here, no problem. Lurking in the trees here, ready to go for Gets the it. surprise spear. Has the arena as well to be able to intercept more heroes as the Grimstrokes is going to try and come in with the help of the Rolling Thunder. They're going to be able to down some heroes around the self fuels from the SF, but as he comes back down, he's immediately stunned with Mars going down inside of the arena. Yaps are covering the field with the Freezing Field. is going to be able to draw some of Alliance away and will be able to get two kills, one of which on the Juggernaut. There is Mickey sitting in the side here. He's ready to jump in as the Morphling trying to get that stun out, but he's immediately silenced by the Smokescreen. Now stunned up by the Fire Blast, and as he morphs in his strength, that means he's got no armor very susceptible to this Riki as he's just getting chunked down oh, at this point. The finishing raise too, and that is Nisha with his Diffusal Blade. How much stronger they are than Alliance. So if they can just catch anybody, that'll be a kill. Zai catching Insania. The App Store now finishes his Blink Dagger. The fact that your fourth position has gotten his Blink Dagger before the three. Jeez. He has a beak. Because that 8,000 net worth lead, we just know it's going to get worse given the kind of kill power that Team Secret have right now, unless they're met with a really strong alliance defense. And they do manage to get the first strike here on Denisha with the ultimate going out to protect him for the time. He can jump over to Zai, which he will do, but the silence is going to follow him as they kept the vision, but the Omni Slash bounce over the neutrals. Now the spear landing onto the Morphling, peering him to the deck, which means Nisha is still trying to get away, but Taiga does have the dust. He's going to run into Nisha once, twice, keeping controlled up. He ends up falling. Box, he does manage to burrow strike away from everybody here is Insania. It's going to go for a one-on-one -on -one against the Crystal Maiden, but the rest of his team isn't there until Madara charges over with his drums at fast moving. Samurai is going to come over with his spin. Yaps are trying to juke him out. Does juke him out for one hit, but a big crit comes out from Madara. Just enough to finish off that support, but you used all of that for a support. Now you got to try and get out back over the shine. We're going to watch Puppy die here with the Epicenter. Inkswell combo. They go straight onto Zai, but the BKB is already activated by uh, mid one, so they just have to go for Zai as best as possible. See if they can finish him off. Madara with a spin is able to get the magic damage to kill that Mars and mid one is the only survivor of that long a lot of their next round of items like that ether lens for insania blink instant silence precast it looks like off of the vision he had but insania still dies also still set up for a team fight the rest of their team can join here they found taiga but he already got off the swashbuckles he's going to be a little bit farther away but the sf also still has that blink dagger and now it'll be on godlike street and this is currently just the mid one show for the Sand King, that's a nice one-two chain stun punch. They would have to do it so perfectly, though, the timing. Yeah. The jump in. Nisha. Trying to help out this Juggernaut, but there's nothing they can do. And now they may be losing Insania's Puppy's going to try and slow him down with the Ignite. And Boxy, Boxy. they see him. They, they want him instead. Him. Oh no, the smoke screen. That's such a big problem. They don't have a four staff or anything just yet. And Zai, he's just daring into the tier threes here, but he's going to get blown up. And the magic damage on the Morphling with that shotgun. Mid one, though, follows it up. Does manage to get at least one. Pops BKB, tries to let it rip on top of the Morphling, but he's already morphed into full strength. So that magic damage isn't going to be able to burst him down as well as he thought. And he's actually one. going for it. Yeah, and he's got the turn for the Ricky. He's going to be able to blink strike on top of the SF to keep up with him, then waveforms on top. Turns back on Ricky once again. Now they manage to get the disarm out to the Ricky. That's not allowing him to finish off that Morphling. And Mickey will swap back in once again. The Aegis, the second life of the Ricky. Can they kill him a second time here with a startup here with the Rolling Thunder? Bounce back with the silence as well. They've got him dead. Mickey. That is so much gold. That is a massive amount. Well played. Oh, they're going for the epicenter. They're going to try and catch him with a burst strike. See if they can get Mars on the way out. That bulwark will help uh, mitigate a lot of the Omni Slash damage, and the arena will allow him to be able to escape until the shotgun finishes him off the Mars. Boxy inside with the Sandstorm gets taken out by Nisha, and the one two punch of the races as well will finish off the Juggernaut. Now they're going to be able to stop the Morphly TPing just as quickly as you thought Secret had dropped the ball in this game. Alliance toss it right back to him. And it was just came, comes down to the fact that they try to make their own aggressive play under the Tier 1 tower. Uh, it's 23 minutes in. There's still a Tier 1 tower. Everyone's going to TP for that. You have to realize that uh, you will die making that move as Insania with a pretty nice juke here. He's still looking for it right now and does catch the tail end of that TP. Should be going down as mid-1 focuses on killing the Spirit first and mid-1. Catches him. Executing raise is there. 
Is that the blink tag? Oh, Jesus. It's the blink tag on the pango, so they have more opportunities to chain stun mid one, but that's also the plus 150 raise damage for the SF, which is gigantic this early on into the game. And he still holds a almost 16,000 net worth on him right now compared to Madara's Juggernaut sitting at 11,000. You can see just a big difference in that how quickly mid one's able to farm up the neutrals as well as all these hero kills he's been a part of. Boxy. Waiting in the wings, their three man smoked up. It looks like they do want to take oh, this fight, but Zai, but Zai knows, knows where Box is going to be hiding. Unfortunately, missed out on the spear. It was a good guess, but they still have Boxy controlled up until he burrow strikes onto the SF. Oh, the magic damage, it wasn't enough. They're trying to chase down mid one as best as possible. The Rolling Thunder is on top right now. The BKB is still activated, though, and mid one is going to be fine, it seems like, as Alliance have given up on that chase. But turn Nisha. Nisha and Zed with a swashbuckle on top of the two with the double fire blast as well from Mickey, who turned into an ogre for a moment there to get that chain stun. Very nicely played. Madara will be the recipient of both of those kills. They try and real quickly TP up the top lane to see if they can get the bounty rings or this kill on Yapsor, which they will have it to. To get away in time, 8,000 net worth. Oh, okay. Rolling Thunder, bouncing things around. And Xenia, realizing supports. this is not a fight with the shrine activated there. Tiger's going to try and oh, get away. Zai tries to get in front of it with the spear, but misses That would have been sick. Again, Zai said twice now that he's made the really good hard read on yeah. somebody. Just he blinks past and just kind of resets in their favor. And slowly but surely, this juggernaut should be getting real strong. Double damage is super scary. If they can actually, oh, they're gonna try and jump on Anisha here. Gets out the smoke screen. There goes the rolling thunder. To try and chase down uh, Zai. Anisha holding his blink strike for now. Wants to be able to jump over to Zai when he sees the opportunity for it. And Taiga. They need to give him an out, but Anish is actually going to go for the kill here onto the Sand King, gets it. And Taiga, well, he's stuck around a bit too long trying to chase people with Rolling Thunder. He does, He's almost level 25 already. He's, I was going to say, he's going to get level 25 before. Oh, there's a double flank in immediately. Grimshock does manage to chain the two of them, even if he's speared to the tier three. He will slow down the retreat and give him oh. an opportunity for double shotgun blast. Follow that up. Oh, nice smoke, smoke screen preventing the burrow strike follow up off of that epicenter. Now they've just wasted one of their big damage abilities. Does Team C. It's an important upgrade, the level 20 talent for the Riki. Super hard to play the back line when the Riki can jump like 2,000 units to be able to catch you. They're going to lead things off with the Rolling Thunder. I like how he didn't focus on that Ogre and went for the next target. That's going to be Yapsor up there on the high ground. Just keeps him chained on the entire time. Does manage to activate the BKB, and he can go for the Freezing Field if he wants inside of the arena. BKB activated by mid one and Zai as they push forward to be able to kill the Morphling. Nice spear out from Zai that catches the Pango as well. Yapsor survives through all that, and Alliance did overextend themselves. And it's going to spin TP out. Should be no problem here. Cancel the TP of one of them because they're actually going on to the Pango. Dead on the dotted line. It's Nisha. Still has two and a half minutes on this Aegis. Like how he just quickly dropped all of his stat items to be able to <laughs> magic wand. To right in front of them. Got a lot of man off of it too. Yeah, he's full pretty much. Yeah. Top shrine is he's waiting there with the nullifier. Can kill Madara too. With the null fire, might be able to do it. The burst strike now, he's silenced up. He does have the Aegis, so this is not the worst thing in the world for Team Secret. With the arena now coming up, Madara wasn't able to get off the Omni Slash in time. Zai pins him to the wall. And with the two BKBs marching forward, they do manage to get the Scythe onto the, the Sand King, but now with the buyback turning into oh, the Mars and getting nice a spear stun. onto Pape. Poor old Puppet is down. Six Team Secret is just not going to let them have the opportunity to do that. They've got 40 seconds left for the Aegis, and they're going to run into some great support heroes into the back line. They go with a smoke screen as well. The Rolling Thunder does manage to do a lot to stall, but Team Secret certainly not scared of one little old Pango. It's just going to allow Mickey as well as Madara to get out. Yeah, now Boxy being dead too. Well, I said get out. There he goes. He's fine making for a nice setup for this defense of Alliance, which seems a little unlikely. 
considering how far behind they are. They're actually going to be able to get the silence on Anisha. It doesn't really want to jump to anybody. Oh, actually, Zai actually jumps into him, latching him in. He was going to blink strike away, but Zai actually stopping him <laughs> by blinking in and uh, getting them la latched together. And a bottom. Uh, does Ju Juggernaut not have, uh, well, he does have Omni Slash, but there's going to be Yule Scepter. Last a little He's bit longer, instantly this. going to get psyched up. And that is the deadest juggernaut. I mean, that that is, it's really cool with the CDR too, because you're going to have a, an mean, Abyssal Blade on, and man. a Scythe that you can use all the time in your fights. I guess. Nice two-man Burrow Strike with the last there. They're going to be able to shotgun the two supports down almost instantly, and there is still no Nisha, so there's not a ton of damage left. Midwan throws out some raises, yes, but he's got to back up. He has a blink away, so he's going to be okay. Boxy couldn't catch him, but they're still on the hunt for Zai. Abyssal. Yeah, the Abyssal Blade is a longer cooldown, though, right? It's 10 21 second cooldown. Yeah. It was real low when he had the Arcane Rune, though. That's true. It was like six seconds less or something. Oh, the nice jump spear in. lead out, the Burrow Strike onto the Crystal Maiden on the side. Throws out the two adaptive strikes, but, uh, and actually he's going to turn into a Riki here. CP, oh, he needs to be able to get the Force Staff upside. He'll be okay. Out of that freezing field they go. They're actually going to be able to leash uh, Nisha together. It's going to be pretty good. Meanwhile, Boxy has been found inside of his own sand so They're going to let loose that ultimate that's going to be godlike for mid one. Nisha did manage to get away and blinks back into this fight. Now that he sees the opportunity, he's joined the rest of his team. He surges forward, kills that Grim Stroke. Mickey as a morphed Ricky. And they're pinging the gem. They know it's still there, but the buyback from Insania. Mickey's pinging right now. He wants to go oh, for it. Oh, he's got, got him. him. Surprise uses the invisibility against the Ricky. <laughs> they're going to recover their gem. Next. Or is it just four? You're just going to get four. Yeah. So very likely that one person's going to. Or do you get five? Oh, that'd be dope because the Hex, I mean, they're going oh, for it right now. Spear with the Soul Flying, keeping them together with Inkswell as well. They're going to Yules one and BKB together, so they won't be hit by that stun. Mid one's still just going to have he's to gone. try and run away, but he's dead. Now Zai's going to be chased down as well. Mantelusion's actually blocking the old Juggernaut out a little bit. Zai tries to go for a Spear here. Mick A trying to Spear <laughs> Zai up. They both whiff. Number 243 and 244, but it looks like they will be able to catch him underneath the tier three. The Ghost by him a little bit of time, but finally the magic damage comes in. Still though, the Morphling has gone too far, gets ripped apart as the buyback from mid one is effective to kill at least one core. That was beyond Two, actually, far. as they got boxy. They dove so far in to try to go for that. Yeah. I, I mean, Mickey, <laughs> I told you, it's not easy to hit that spear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you get it on him, you probably don't even die there. And you go back and get Roche. But now in a position uh, where none of that's possible, they did go for the buyback, so now it's going to be a little bit do or die for both sides, as they might just catch Puppy here. Yeah, Puppy. Pretty heavily chain stunned here. You're going to still complete that TP. He does. Oh, Nisha pops his BKB, tries to go back in with the smoke screen. The spear actually doesn't latch there. And the soul bind. Not going to allow the mobility here to be able to catch until it finally fades away. So they do jump onto that pango. They at least get that one pick off. All these buybacks being used by Team Secret. Heading into the Roche Pit. Or maybe not. I, they thought about it. I bought back for this, so they better. Yeah. So now they're going to walk in. This is the Axe. Who to give to? Oh, mid one, right? For sure. Nah, dude. Nisha's. You like the pocket Riki instead? <laughs> well, Puppy is tanky enough to live through that one, but they have so much long range poke here. But now the Abyssal Blade jump forward with the BKB activated, but Monra does manage to get a defensive force down, but it's going to be the Morphling who's going to be in trouble instead as they He's do manage buyback. to finish him off. And he doesn't have buyback here. Monra is going to try and spin back in with the Inkswells, hoping that he can deal enough damage with. It will be enough to finish off Psy, but it looks like Nisha's going to be okay. He walks away from him. Allows Midwan to be able to finish up that kill, and he's going to be able to find him with a sight. Does a little dance and a jig before double raising Insania. Dodging that burrow strike that came out. Now Boxy tries to go for an epicenter. Oh, oh no. no. In the span of this time.
And this is our second series of the day. As the oh, the jump in, jump. and I soul bind onto Yapsor as well as Zyme, but they managed to get the spear that already finished off that Grimshrow. But mid one is being targeted heavily by Mikke, who has that eye of Scotty. Stays on top of him. Don't let it blink away. Get that roll under. The Abyssal Blade in the blink. He gets away. Nisha now going to jump in straight onto Boxy with his Zilla Fire. But Mikke is back. After failing to kill mid one, he's going to go for some of these other heroes. Needs some force staff to be able to help him out. But the Nisha just everywhere. ripped him apart so quickly. A big shot out. A big burst of magic damage. He ends up falling. They do not have buyback on two of these heroes. Alliance want to defend. Then three versus five now. There was smoke everywhere on the ground. They could not force staff him enough times. And now just one lane of barracks, four megas, no buyback on the Sand King or the Grim Stroke, and towers dropping fast. Leading to out with the side though. Oh, thank God with the Null Fire, they're controlling up Madara pretty well. They can keep the disables up thanks to mid one as well. Just nobody can actually save them because all the four staffs are actually dead right now. Now with the smoke screen on top of this Morphling, they do manage to get that ghost step to itself. Uh, Ethereal Blade is going to allow him to survive for a while, but they just have so much to disable. Now the Spear onto the Ancient that they're going to look to blow up soon, right after they finish up with Madara here in his second life. No buyback from Mikke. Madara dropping low. Omni slashes <laughs> onto the Grief Wave just to stay alive a little longer, but they pop the Glyph instantly, so he doesn't even kill any creeps. Makes it away back to the Fountain, but that's what Mars can do best. Same goes with the Freezing Field Crystal Maiden, that high armor. They can tank the Fountain. They can do this all day. The double scythe out. Okay, Epicenter with the Ink Swell. That's a lot of damage. That'll finish off Mars. Now it actually latches onto the SF as well. A big hit out from Insania. They're all so low, but the Sandstorm's just not quite finishing them off. And the Grimstroke by himself now can't do enough magic damage anymore to get these kills. The spite glyph onto the creeps. You get nothing, sir. Not even heroes. Not even creep kills.